Nature, with its undeniable beauty, often reveals a darker side. As an avid animal lover, I'm fascinated by various creatures, but there are some that I prefer not to encounter. Unfortunately, we don't always have the luxury of choice. From spine-chilling beings that elicit skin-crawling fear to monstrous creatures capable of tearing us limb from limb, here's a list of animals that should be avoided at all costs. Sandflies Sandflies, they don't seem so bad. It's sure they're annoying and they cause itchy little bumps, but they're completely harmless, right? Wrong. Yeah, they're definitely annoying, as most people who've been trying to enjoy a trip to the beach or a picnic will let you know. But they can also carry diseases, which they then transmit to humans while on the hunt for fresh blood. Sandflies are tiny and about an eighth of an inch long, and they're active during dusk and dawn. For the most part, anyone bitten by a sandfly will get a red bump and blisters. Sometimes, though, inflammation and dermatitis can follow, not to mention severe skin sores for weeks or months after they bite. They can also cause parasitic diseases that require ongoing medical care. Fortunately, calamine lotion or hydrocortisone cream can reduce itching and help them heal. Anyone with an ulcer or persistent sore should see a doctor. Pork tapeworm Tania solium, also known as the pork tapeworm, can cause epileptic seizures and other neurological problems in humans from ingesting eggs containing infective larvae. The breakdown of the egg shell occurs in the intestines, allowing the larvae to exit and enter the bloodstream. Once in the circulation, the larvae may settle in many types of body tissues. Sometimes larvae cross the blood-brain barrier and enter the central nervous system, or CNS, where the embryos develop into fluid-filled cysts, leading to a condition known as neurocystosarcosis, which results in seizures and as one of the most dangerous parasitic CNS infections worldwide. Diagnosis of this neurocystosarcosis is difficult due to the lack of specific clinical symptoms. The disease, which normally affects people in South America, Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, has been exceptionally rare in Western countries. However, a few cases have been reported in the UK and the US. Poison Dart Frog this frog is the one you cannot touch. As per researchers, poison dart frogs are among the most poisonous animals on the planet. They're just an inch in size, but packed with sufficient toxins to kill an adult simply by touch. These frogs are found in dozens of different species and of colorful patterns in different areas. They are mostly found in the forests of Colombia. King Cobra King Cobra is the animal with whom no one would like to fiddle. In this clip, you can see that it's trying to ignore the human, but it does not allow it to cross its personal space and attacks as soon as he crosses the limit. King cobras are 3 to 4 meters long and are known to be the largest poisonous snakes. They're mostly found in Southeast Asia and can be recognized by looking at the neck flap, raised head, hissing and puffing. The venom of the king cobra is sufficient to initially paralyze and slowly kill a fully grown elephant within just a few hours. Funnel Web Spider the Sydney web spider is a venomous spider species and is found in eastern Australia. Its male is believed to be the most dangerous spider in Australia and can cause death within 15 minutes. It is a large, black, aggressive spider that has big, powerful fangs. It resides in burrows or crevices and rocks or around house foundations. It resorts to lining the burrows with silk. It can cause serious illness. However, the lethal dose of venom in humans is not known. Bulletant. The name says it all. The sting from a bullet ant is compared to being shot at. Not that it's an experience many are familiar with, but you get the picture. The ant attacks the central nervous system and goes through the entire body and makes you feel a great deal of pain. The venom on the ant is, however, not lethal. The effects don't last for a long time. You, however, shake violently, sweat, and your heart races. These are among the largest of the ant species and grow to about an inch long. They're mostly found in the Amazon forest. An Amazonian tribe uses them for some ceremonies where they place them on the hands and they render numerous bites. It's said that once the venom subsides, one has a huge blast of adrenaline. Giant Hornets These deadly bugs are said to go on killing sprees whereby they target children and farm workers. In 2013, about 43 people were killed, while over a thousand were injured in Shaanxi, China. After the incident, they sprayed the entire city, combing out giant hornet nests. The bugs inject venom into the body, the venom kills red blood cells and leads to kidney failure, anaphylactic shock, or even death. For one worker, it was such a gruesome experience when dozens of hornets landed on her legs and head and she could not move. Eventually, she needed 13 dialysis treatments and 200 stitches. 
These bugs are the size of a thumb and have a black tooth that they use to sever the heads of their victims. Every hornet has about 1 to 2,000 young ones at any given breeding season. They feed their offspring the larvae of other insects. They are usually attracted to sweet smells as well as alcohol. They fancy human sweat, especially during running. Venomous Pus Caterpillars When you first see a pus caterpillar, it looks a lot like a lucky rabbit's foot or even the fuzzy ear of a stuffed teddy bear. But these fluffy insects are anything but sweet and cuddly. Pus caterpillars are highly venomous creatures. While these insects may look soft, their outer combs hide small, extremely toxic spines that stick into its catch. According to experts, a pus caterpillar sting feels like a bee sting, only worse. The pain immediately and rapidly gets worse after being stung and can even make your bones hurt. How bad the sting hurts depends on where you get stung and how many spines are embedded in your skin. Interestingly, pus caterpillars are poop throwers. They fling their poop away from their bodies. Paul believes that this behavior prevents parasites and other potential predators from attacking or harming the caterpillars. This thing is dangerous and gross. Yikes. Sea urchins Sea urchins are much smaller as compared to stonefish but are extremely spiky. They're found on the seabeds of shallow water. They grow from 1 to 4 inches. They have a mouth at the bottom of their body and are protected by many calcium carbonate plates. They have long, sharp spines which can cause painful puncture wounds and some of them can inject venom. Symptoms of venom-injected victims include numbness and pain. Their spines are not very strong, therefore can easily break up and get stuck and can even pierce deeper into the skin. Fleas. These may seem like common pests, but don't be deceived. Once they get into your home, they can cause complete havoc. They can jump 8 inches, that's 150 times their height, meaning that moving around is not a hassle. That kind of jumping is crazy though, it's like a human jumping the length of three football fields. They don't cause severe harm to humans, the intense itching however could lead to infection. Fleas are most likely to cause an allergic reaction in pets and anemia from blood loss. Their lifespan is 100 days and in a month 25 fleas can multiply to up to a quarter of a million. They are found on cats and dogs and can also go for birds, reptiles and other mammals including humans. Keeping grass short as well as vacuuming your carpets often is the best way to steer clear of these bugs. Kissing Bug What name do you give a bug that leaves bite marks on your face? You got that right, a kissing bug. This, however, is a kiss you don't want to encounter. The bug leaves lethal feces when it bites which can cause a chronic illness that leads to flu-like symptoms. There's no cure for the illness and, in some cases, it causes an enlarged heart and the thinning of the colon. This bug is attracted to carbon dioxide which humans breathe out and that's the reason most of their bites are around the mouths. Their bites occur mostly at night and they're said to cause a numbing effect on the area that they bite meaning you don't feel it when you're being bitten. While bug spray works perfectly as a repellent, they can enter homes using any opening and more so they can get into door cracks easily. Time to do a home innovation. Slow Loris This cute bundle of joy called Slow Loris is immensely poisonous. Slow lorises are among the endangered animals and possess a poison as powerful as that of a cobra. Even their unintentional bite can cause an anaphylactic shock which can be followed by death. They reside in the wild regions of Southeast Asian countries. A pygmy slow loris can hang still from a branch for hours if necessary. This skill is facilitated by extravascular bundles in its arms and legs called retia mirabilia, which allow blood to flow to its extremities so it doesn't experience pins and needles from lack of circulation. Brown Recluse This is a very shy spider. That said, it's very deadly and has the power to melt human flesh. Its venom is so potent it can break down skin, fat and blood cells, a process called necrosis. This is, however, in very rare cases. People who are bitten by the spider experience minor discomfort, swelling and redness. The symptoms clear within three days without any medical interventions. They can also render severe pain, ulcers, chills and nausea, as well as joint pains and seizures. Luckily, they are shy and don't come out in openly crowded spaces. They like attics and garages. They're the most feared and misunderstood spiders in America. Stonefish You need to mind your surroundings as stonefish could prove to be the most dangerous sea animal in the water. They're sneaky and also merciless. They have dorsal fins with fangs on the surface skin along with glands that are used to inject venom. They're able to camouflage themselves so well you may not be able to see them and might accidentally stumble on them and get stung as can be seen in the footage. The release of venom corresponds to the pressure applied. 
Stonefish are found near coral reefs in rivers, generally in the tropical Pacific and Indian Oceans. Cone Snails Those who have a hobby of collecting seashells must avoid touching cone snails. They are known to have a hard and textured shell. They are highly toxic as they have venom glands along with needle-like teeth that they use to attack victims or predators leading to paralysis. On being provoked, cone snails can sting humans. Tsetse Fly One bite from this fly is enough to bring on lethal sleep. It has a saw-like mouth and tears and rips the skin while sucking blood. As if that wasn't bad enough, it also transmits serious tropical diseases. When it bites its victims, symptoms such as fever, aching and headache are common. As time goes by, the illness becomes worse. A feeling of tiredness is the most common symptom, which is why it's called sleeping sickness. The disease affects the brain and can cause a personality change, confusion and poor coordination. Medical treatments are available but can be dangerous and even toxic, mostly if the disease gets to the brain. Tsetse flies are found in Central Africa. As of now, they're said to have been completely eradicated, but it's suspected that there are a few cases that go unreported in the villages. The fly is one of the few that feed young ones with milk when they're born, much like humans. They get very few offspring, and when they're born, they come out of the uterus fully grown, fed and healthy. Locusts Surprised? While they do not directly kill humans, the devastation that an invasion can cause has been responsible for crop devastation. The locusts will always eat, but you might not. Desert locusts, or Schistocerca gregaria, have also been called the world's most devastating pest, and for good reason. Swarms from these locust numbers increase and they become crowded. This causes a switch from a relatively harmless solitary phase to a gregarious sociable phase. In this phase, the insects are able to multiply 20-fold in three months and reach densities of 80 million per square kilometer. Each can consume 2 grams of vegetation every day. Combined, a swarm of 80 million can consume food equivalent to that eaten by 35,000 people a day. In 2020, locusts have swarmed in large numbers in dozens of countries, including Kenya, Ethiopia, Uganda, Somalia, Eritrea, India, Pakistan, Iran, Yemen, Oman, and Saudi Arabia. When swarms affect several countries at once in very large numbers, it's known as a plague. Dingo The dingo is Australia's wild dog. It is an ancient breed of domestic dog that was introduced to Australia, probably by Asian seafarers, about 4,000 years ago. Its origins have been traced back to early breeds of domestic dogs in Southeast Asia. They move and hunt in packs with an amazing level of teamwork. They closely resemble dire wolves. Usually, dingoes try to avoid confronting humans, but they can be unpredictable and attack humans. They can be far more aggressive than normal dogs. Bot flies. These flies will make you cry. They don't necessarily live such a long life, and that said, they have the most peculiar habits. First off, they mate, then hatch the eggs, and then stash them into the bodies of insects such as ticks and mosquitoes. When the eggs are left out, they easily burrow into our skin and feed off the skin until they're all grown up, and fly away and repeat the process all over again. The larvae of the eggs cause holes to open up on the skin of victims, making them vulnerable to bacteria and diseases, which can easily enter through the wounds. There are a few ways to treat someone who's been affected by bot flies. The eggs can be removed by tweezers. Doctors also prescribe some antibiotics or even bacon, which is less painful than tweezers. All you have to do is attach the piece of bacon to the affected area, and the bot flies will attach themselves to the bacon instead. Just don't eat the bacon afterwards if you know what's good for you. Killer bees This is what you get when you crossbreed a European honeybee with an African bee. A dangerous kind of bee that's super aggressive and will sting human beings to death. Up to a thousand people have been killed by these bees. Children and the elderly are most at risk since they're not able to run away from an attack by the killer bees, who will chase their victims up to a quarter mile. The venom is not necessarily stronger, it's just that stings from multiple bees mean more dosage of the venom, making it deadly. They were the result of a failed scientific experiment in America's green forest that's now under threat where the imported killer bees are causing death and destruction among birds, butterflies as well as bats in the rainforest. The nesting habits of these bees means that they can be easily found near humans. They, however, get agitated by noise such as lawn mowing and dogs barking. If an attack ever happens, the best thing to do is run very fast. Porcupine No one would like to touch a porcupine due to its spines, which can be raised instantly and used as a defensive weapon. These quills are 14 inches long and cover them from head to back. Predators usually harm themselves when they try to attack a porcupine, 
In this footage, you can see a leopard attempting to target this spiny creature who manages to escape unhurt. Mosquitoes. They kill millions of people each year. Once upon a time, it was the deadliest creature on the planet. It's not the bite itself that causes the death. It's the diseases transmitted by these bloodsuckers when they sink their teeth into human flesh. It's only the female mosquitoes that bite because they rely on the protein in the blood to feed their eggs. They use an incredible six needles to pierce into the skin. They transmit a host of deadly diseases, the most prominent one being malaria. These diseases destroy the red blood cells, leaving the victim suffering from fever, headaches, body aches, muscle aches, vomiting, and diarrhea. Though this is common in some parts of the world, there's a preventative medication that's quite effective. Zika virus, which is also caused by mosquitoes, made headlines recently after a spike in cases, since it leads to serious birth defects, most common of which results in an abnormally small head. Other diseases linked to the mosquito include yellow fever, Nile virus, and dengue fever. Chikungunya mosquitoes are attracted to bright clothing and scented beauty products. Dead fish still got it. Some people may think that a fish out of water doesn't pose any threat to them. Few people have an instinctive tendency to insert their finger in the mouth of a dead fish without realizing it can still crush the bones in other parts of the body. It can get its jaws on your fingers. You can see in this clip how a wolf fish completely destroyed a soda can as if it was a piece of paper. Even when the fish is decapitated, it still bites the can of coke like a living fish. You could call it a zombie fish, or maybe it was just angry at being decapitated. Being cold-blooded animals, the brains, nerves, and muscles of fish can remain alive in cold temperatures before dying from oxygen deprivation. Interestingly, the head of the fish can still swim in the water, even if it's been separated from the body, as can be seen in this clip. The House Centipede this one has many tiny legs, unlike its competition. Its speed is astounding, and it uses the multiple legs to lasso the prey, such as flies, bedbugs, and wasps. It injects venom to subdue the tasty treats. Centipedes can live a fairly long life compared to other insects, about four or five years, meaning they have time to perfect their hunting skills. Their bites cause discomfort to humans as well as redness and swelling. Like bees, they're not looking to attack humans and will tend to stay away from humans since they're not a source of food. They will only sting if you touch them. It's not such a bad idea having them around. They'll also get rid of other crawling insects in the vicinity. Spitting thick tail Black Scorpion This is one of the largest scorpions and is also known as the South African fat tail Scorpion. It's the most dangerous scorpion in the southern regions of Africa. Its ubiquitously stout tail and stinger can deliver 4.25 milligrams of venom, and that's enough to kill an adult human. Its venom has the same potency as cyanide, but not every sting is immediately fatal. One unique characteristic of this scorpion is that it secretes and uses two different poisons. The first is more like a warning dose that's sufficiently potent to only immobilize small prey and serve as a warning shot. If the prey is not subdued or an aggressor doesn't relent its attack, the scorpion delivers a second dose, one that's potentially lethal. The scorpion uses this as a defense if it feels it's in a life-or-death situation. Another unusual feature of this scorpion is that it can actually spit its venom up to a distance of three feet. If its aim is right, it can temporarily blind or permanently damage the target's eyes. Despite the lethality of its venom, less than 1% of victims have died from this scorpion's sting. Even though you're unlikely to die from its venom, it is by no means a walk in the park. Symptoms that may manifest in victims include intense pain, sweating, muscular convulsions, drooling, and heart palpitations. Deer Tick How dangerous are deer ticks? Well, on a scale of 1 to 10, an infected deer tick is a 100. Infected ticks are responsible for transmitting some serious and even deadly diseases like Lyme disease, babesiosis, anaplasmosis, and the emerging Powassan virus. Because you do not know which ticks are infected and which ones are not, it's important to know a deer tick when you see it and to protect yourself from contact with them. These blood-sucking members of the arachnid family were vaulted into the public consciousness in the mid-1970s when it was discovered that they are the primary and possibly only transmitters or vectors for Lyme disease. Lyme disease is a debilitating, though rarely fatal, infection that's often misdiagnosed because early symptoms closely resemble the flu. Victims usually have a slowly spreading bullseye-shaped rash when the tick attached, but not always. If untreated by antibiotics, patients can develop a variety of health problems, including facial paralysis, heart palpitations, arthritis, severe headaches, and neurological disorders. 
Lyme disease is currently one of the fastest growing vector borne diseases in the United States. More than 14,000 cases are reported annually, but because symptoms so closely resemble the flu and usually go away without treatment, scientists estimate as many as 9 out of every 10 cases go unreported. Bed bugs. Humans have lived with bed bugs since the earliest days of our existence, or more correctly stated, bed bugs have lived with humans. Since bed bugs are human parasites, our survival is critical to theirs. This may be one of the reasons bed bugs have not been known to transmit diseases to humans. However, while they've not been known to transmit diseases through feeding activities, there may still be health risks associated with bed bugs. They can be responsible for health issues that range from mild to very serious. The most common health issue is related to the itching that often comes along with bed bug bites. Many people experience red bumps or welts on their skin within a couple of days of a bed bug attack. In some cases, the reaction may take up to a week or two, and some people do not react at all. The bumps or welts look very similar to mosquito bite, but tend to stay with the afflicted person much longer, often two weeks or more. These bites can itch incessantly, and scratching is inevitable. That is where the danger comes in. Excessive scratching can cause damage to the skin that may allow the introduction of organisms of infection, some of them very dangerous. Cockroaches Cockroaches are equal opportunity invaders. These nuisances can establish themselves wherever they can find reliable sources of food, water, and shelter. Unfortunately, people's homes are one of the major suppliers of all three of these cockroach necessities. If you do see one cockroach in your home, many more may be lurking nearby. These numbers may be alarming, but are cockroaches more than pests? Cockroaches aren't known to bite, but some common species do have heavy leg spines that can scratch your skin. More importantly, cockroaches are potentially harmful to your health. They are not the most sanitary insects. They feed on garbage, breed in sewage, and lay waste all over your kitchen counter. Although cockroaches haven't been linked to any specific outbreaks, they play a role in spreading certain infections. According to the World Health Organization, cockroaches are known or suspected carriers of the microorganisms that cause diarrhea, dysentery, cholera, leprosy, plague, typhoid fever, and viral diseases such as poliomyelitis. Though they likely won't be the main cause of a disease spreading, they can play a supplementary role. Hooded Pitahui It may be difficult to believe that a bird can be poisonous. However, Hooded Pitahui is venomous as highlighted by a researcher from the California Academy of Sciences. While studying different bird species, he found that Hooded Pitahui was a poisonous bird. During the process of capturing it, he put his finger instinctively in its mouth, which had been stung by the bird. His mouth started to feel weird. Inquiry from the locals indicated that the bird was poisonous. Research levels that these toxins helped the bird with grabbing prey and fighting against parasites. Why no one should touch a dead camel This is a picture of a decapitated camel lying apparently lifeless in the desert. But what happens when someone tries touching it? Firstly, touching a dead camel is a really bad idea. These animals are referred to as the ship of the desert, and sometimes people get the wild idea of extracting the water from a dead camel's hump. A lost traveller once discovered a dead camel, and because he was starving and thirsty, he decided to cut up the camel and extract water. But that didn't work, because when an animal dies of starvation, the body prevents lipid metabolism, so the body fat eventually breaks down to gases like methane. The water in the carcass is not digested, and the microorganisms in it slowly decompose and ferment into carbon dioxide and other flammable gases. The dead camel eventually becomes drier and thinner because of the gas formation, causing the body to inflate, and when someone touches it, the body will explode. The Eye Worm Transmitted by horseflies breeding in the forest areas of western central Africa, Loyasis is known as African Eye Worm and gets its name from its most infamous telltale sign the visible passing of the Lao Lao worm through the eye. The larvae of this nematode worm infects humans through fly bites, and the adult can travel through the body tissues for years. Most common in Western Central Africa, symptoms include itching, swelling, and even brain damage in very unlucky victims. The worm only becomes obvious when it reaches the eye, where it can be easily seen and, more horribly, felt by its victim as it squirms across the soft tissue beneath the cornea. This is also when the worm is fairly simple to remove under local anaesthetic. The Toe Biter Delving into the enigmatic waters, we encounter the giant water bug, a creature that seamlessly combines swimming, flying, and sheer terror. Despite its leaf-like guise, the Toe Biter is hyper-aggressive, mercilessly attacking anything, including humans, that dares to approach. 
In securing its prey, the water bug employs a gruesome feeding ritual. By biting down and injecting enzymes through its proboscis, it breaks down the prey's innards. The water bug then consumes the disintegrated insides, with the victim horrifyingly remaining alive for part of this ordeal. While the bite won't dissolve your insides, it inflicts intense pain, warranting utmost avoidance of toe biters. Encountering a male water bug with a peculiar-looking mass atop, resembling unsettling stuff, signals imminent danger. It's a male bug carrying its eggs. Some species involve females laying eggs on males who become protective carriers. Others deposit eggs on sticks in bodies of water, with the dedicated daddy fiercely defending them. Entomologist Chris Goffith, in her research, experienced firsthand the intense protectiveness of waterbug fathers. Collecting eggs in an Arizona pond, a defensive male persistently attacked her, even falling into the water without relenting. Goffith had to fend off the insect four times, including one close call where it snuck into her neck before she swatted it away. The remarkable dedication of these creatures to safeguard their offspring adds a layer of awe, even if encounters prove unnerving. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please let me know by clicking the like button, do share, and don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch up my next video.